Today we're talking about eight common programming slang terms that you may have heard of, but you don't quite know what they mean. For example, when I was at my first startup, one of the developers was like, oh yeah, yeah, I gotta shave this yak first. And I was like, what? <laughs> Did you just say shaving a yak? Like, what the hell are you talking about? So it's weird stuff like that, that is just kind of like common among programmers that we're gonna talk about some definitions. And if you have some good ones that I don't cover, like leave them in the comments. I think it can be a, a pretty funny comment section. And real quick, for those of you that are new to the channel, I'm an iOS developer that specializes in Swift. So a lot of the examples I give uh, will be you know, from that lens. First up, let's talk about that yak. So what is yak shaving? Well, it's all that little stuff you have to do before you can actually do your work. Let me give you an example, again, from the iOS developer's perspective. So say you join a, a new project, a new company. Before you can actually start working, you have to you know, get access to the repo, clone the repo, maybe install the Cocoa Pods, maybe there's some provisioning profile and certificate stuff you have to handle. Just all that setup stuff before you can actually do your work, like that's the yak shaving. Another quick example, maybe you update Xcode and now the new version of Xcode you know, has some stuff deprecated, you got a bunch of errors and warnings. We gotta clear all that stuff out before you can start working. So again, all that little stuff, that's the yak shaving. Now this next one I'd actually never heard, but when I came across it, it made me laugh, so I had to include it, and that is refactoring. <laughs> As you can imagine, it's a play on refactoring. So right when you refactor code, you take some messy code, clean it up, make it nice, nicely architected, all that good stuff. Well, refactoring is the exact opposite. You take a nicely refactored, architected, you know, logical piece of code, refactor it more and you just mess it all up. And that's refactoring, and I'm going to use that all the time now. Now let's talk about code smells. Now, a code smell, like, technically isn't incorrect, like it, it, the code still runs, it still works, but it's usually an indicator that, you know, the code isn't properly architected or, or you're gonna have problems with this code in the future or it's gonna be buggy. Again, let me give you some examples. So an iOS development, massive view controller, right? We've all been there, we've all seen it. Well, if a code base is riddled with massive view controllers, like that's a code smell, because you can almost guarantee that there's probably gonna be issues with that code, or if there's not issues with the code, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to work in. Likewise with overusing singletons or global variables everywhere, because oftentimes that's like the easy answer, quick fix, is ah, just make everything access it. But as you know, that's dangerous. Same thing with uh, overuse of force unwrapping, right? If you see a code base and there's force unwrapping of optionals everywhere, you're probably gonna have bugs in the future. And then another code smell that's a segue to the next topic is string literals everywhere, right? In Swift, uh, a lot of times you identify something by a string, like an image, and that can be fragile. Um, let's just talk about the next one because I'll, I'll dive into the details there. So stringly typed is another slang term, right? It's kind of a riff on like strongly typed, but stringly typed is, is like this example you see on the screen, where again, you identify something by a string. Now that in and of itself isn't terrible, but you know, in this example, we're using our company logo as an image. We can imagine a company logo could be used in 12 different spots throughout your app. Well, when something's stringly typed and it's just a string, if you wanna change that uh, image, you have to change it in 12 different places and update the string. Not to mention when you're updating a string, a one small little typo and it breaks, stringly typed, very fragile. So what you wanna do here is uh, you know, make a constant out of it, right? So you can do image.companyLogo. And now one, you get autocomplete, so you're not gonna have typos. And two, if you do wanna change that image file name, Right, you just go to your like a constants file, change it once and it changes everywhere. You don't have to change it in like 12 different spots. So that is what stringly typed means. Next is a term I see all the time on Twitter and just like casual conversations and that is grok. And grok just means to like deeply understand something. Like for example, you know, I, I kind of know how to make a new UI collection view with difficult data source. Like it's pretty new, so I don't understand it deeply, but I can get by, like I kind of know it. I don't grok that, you know, but I grok UI table views because I've built 500 of them, right? So grok means you deeply understand it. And this tweet from Dave DeLong is like I said, like an example, you see it all the time on Twitter, at least I do, right? My opinion is that every time I try to grok rack, I don't even know what rack is, uh, my brain recursively uh, implodes 47 times a charm. But you can see how it's used, right? I grok that, or I'm trying to grok that, means you're trying to deeply understand it, not just know how to use it and get by. Next up, magic numbers. And magic numbers are, are just numbers that are hard-coded into your code without like explanation. And here's an example. We're, we're trying to see if a price is within a price margin of plus or minus 15%. So you can see this line here, we're, we're checking the low threshold for 0 0.85 and the high threshold for 1.15. Now, of course, us who wrote the code, we know that there's a, a margin of plus or minus 15%, so this makes sense to us. But again, other people coming into your code aren't gonna have that context, or, or maybe even you, six months later, you're gonna be like, wait, what do these numbers mean? 
So writing out something like this, even though yes, it is more lines of code, it is more spelled out, but you're gonna thank yourself later, right? You, you define your acceptable price margin, you define your low threshold, you define your high threshold. So now your logic reads nicely and it's very easy to understand, right? If price is greater than the lower threshold, but also lower than the higher threshold, then it is within the margin, right? That's very easy to understand than just random numbers everywhere in your code that it's just gonna be confusing. Next up is a real common one, and that is spaghetti code. And that basically just means that, you know, it's not nicely structured, it's not super organized, it's just going everywhere and, and so hard to follow, so hard to reason about. As you can see from this image here that nicely demonstrates, you know, spaghetti code. Of course, it's using the old school go to line this, go to line that, but you can see how it just goes everywhere. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, again, just so hard to understand what is actually going on in the code. So that is spaghetti code. By the name, it's just a tangled mess. And the last one is rubber ducking. And I remember when this was introduced to me back in 2015, when I did my boot camp, they said, just like talk to the duck and literally had rubber duckies laid out. And I was like, okay, this is, this is weird. Um, but essentially what it means is when you just explain your problem out loud. So in real life, okay, you're probably not going to talk to a duck, but maybe you go to a coworker for help. And in the process of explaining your problem to the coworker so they can understand it, like you discover the answer because you said it out loud and had to explain it to someone else. It's kind of like a way to get out of your own head and learn it, but it, it always happens, right? As soon as you start explaining it to a coworker, you're like, oh shit, I get it now, Never mind, right? And then you go. So those are just a handful of common programming slang. Again, I would love to see yours in the comments. I think that'll be pretty fun. We'll see you in the next video.